I spent just 20 bucks at the hardware store and completely transformed the sharpness of my astrophotos. Check out this jaw dropping before and after shot. Same telescope, same target, but these three simple mods made all the difference. And one uses materials you can easily grab at any hardware store. In the next few minutes, I'll show you exactly how to build each mod, starting with the one that had the biggest impact and why telescope makers don't want you to know about it. I've tested these mods that I made to my telescope for over a year now, and the results will make you rethink buying expensive telescope accessories. So let's get to it. Okay, so hopefully you just saw how with just $20 and a few simple mods, how my uh, images have been totally transformed. The sharpness and contrast of my astrophotos is much improved. Wouldn't you agree? Today I'm going to walk you through each mod and I'm going to start with the one that made the biggest difference. First up is flocking the inside of the telescope tube. Now, if you don't know what flocking is, it's basically lining the inside of the telescope with a black felt like material that absorbs that stray light instead of reflecting it. This is a game changer for reducing internal reflections that cause light scatter and reduce image contrast. When stray light bounces inside the tube, it washes out your stars and details. And as I've seen, I got some really weird gradients and streaks of light in some of my images. I really needed to do something about this and flocking was the answer. Flocking is basically lining the inside with a black felt like material that absorbs rather than reflects the stray light that enters the telescope. The interesting thing is that when you buy a modern telescope, they don't have this flocking and I noticed with my Celestron 130 SLT tube that there was quite a lot of reflection inside the tube. Yes, it was painted a kind of black, but it was a reflective black. I think that telescopes should come with this flocking done. The materials you need for this are very simple. All you need is some black flocking material. You can find this at most hardware craft stores scissors and some adhesive spray or glue. In fact, the flocking material I found didn't even require glue because it had an adhesive backing and it was really quite easy to apply. Here's a quick step by step. Start by cleaning the inside of your tube to remove any dust, then cut strips of the flocking material to fit inside. Stick the strips carefully along the tube walls, making sure that no wrinkles or gaps exist. Once you've covered the entire tube, you'll see a huge difference in reduction of reflected light. Okay, here's a side by side comparison of images taken before and after flocking my telescope. Notice how the stars pop out with much better contrast and sharpness. One tip though, make sure the flocking is smooth and fully covers the inside. Any gaps can let light bounce around and reduce the effect of your flocking. I actually found it quite easy to do this. I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult, but you will need to get very hands on with your telescope. You'll need to take all the parts off, take it to pieces, remove the mirrors and go slowly, making sure that you can reassemble the telescope and you get back to what you had before. Finally, let's talk about blocking stray light from street lamps, garden lights, or even the moon. This light pollution can wash out your images and reduce contrast. I made a simple light shield and baffle using car carpet, a cheap, effective material that blocks unwanted light and also helps protect against dew. And it even looks good. Two. Here's what my telescope looks like without the shield and baffle. And here's what my telescope looks like with the shield and baffle. The materials that you need for this is just some car carpet, scissors and tape or glue. 
I actually used Velcro as well because I find Velcro very, very helpful. I stick the Velcro to the telescope tube and glue it onto the light shield itself. And then I can take the light shield or baffle on and off as I wish. So steps to doing this are very, very easy. Once you've got your carpet pieces, you just measure them and you cut them with the scissors and you basically wrap it around the front of the telescope, around the aperture. You need it to maybe extend several inches so that it cuts out any stray light from entering your telescope in the first place from the front. It's just a shade, really, for your telescope. And the baffle at the back, the idea that I had with the baffle at the back was to block out any light entering around the main mirror. Because I did notice that even though this is a good telescope manufactured by a well-known brand, Celestron, it really is not protected at all at the rear from light entering. And in fact, to the point where it just has a little cardboard piece, which was bending and light was definitely leaking in around there. Once we cut out these extra bits of light, our images should improve quite a lot. You want to be careful though, when you're attaching the pieces, that it's not going to impact your imaging at all. It's not going to impact the telescope's movement either. Remember that your telescope will move about its axis and you don't want the extension to be so long that it gets in the way or the baffle the same. So again, here's a comparison showing how the light shield reduces stray light and improves image contrast. And the bonus with this is it also helps reduce dew buildup on the front lens. And if you do get dew buildup on your front lens or on your mirrors, uh, that will also impact the image. Next is the Batonoff mask, a simple but incredibly effective focusing aid. Getting perfect focus is critical in astrophotography and this mask makes it easy and precise. And by the way, I have got a very helpful video, which I did a while back, all about how to get perfect focus in astrophotography. And so if you're interested in taking a look at that, I'll put the links down in the description. Go check that out. The Batonoff mask creates diffraction spikes around bright stars, which shift as you adjust focus. When the spikes line up perfectly, you know your focus is spot on. This is a really great way to sharpen up your focus. The Batonoff mask fits onto the aperture of your telescope and you basically get three diffraction spikes. And it's easy with a slight adjustment of the focus, you can adjust the diffraction spikes until they're evenly spaced. Once they're evenly spaced, you know that your focus is spot on. And I must admit, it's really made a huge difference to the sharpness of my images. If you have access to a 3D printer, as I did, you can print one for just pennies rather than ordering online and spending dollars and dollars and dollars for what is quite a simple piece of equipment. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, then you can still order online and it's definitely still going to be cheaper than ordering from one of the top brands. I actually downloaded a design for this mask. I downloaded the file, I sent it to a friend who has a 3D printer, got it printed and it fits nicely on my telescope. And it's so easy to use. To use it, you just place the mask over your telescope's aperture point at a bright star. I usually use al Qaeda or Vega in the Northern Hemisphere. And I adjust focus until the diffraction spikes line up. I've never really had any problems doing this. You might have to try a few times, but usually it means I can find focus within a couple of minutes. Once you've found the correct focus, make sure to really lock it down and retest that it's okay. So here are some comparison images of focused without a Batonoff mask and with a Batonoff mask. 
the difference in star sharpness is quite clear. So I have to just mention here that I once did make a terrible error and I lost an entire evening's images because of poor focus. And don't forget that sometimes your focus may also drift in the evening too, especially if you don't lock it down or if the temperature changes. So the Batonoff mask is a great quick way to check that your focus is spot on. Before I used the Batonoff mask, I thought by visually looking at my images that focus was pretty good. I let it run the whole night and in the morning when I checked my images, they were all slightly out of focus and I had to throw away all the images that I'd collected the whole night and it was a total waste of time. So the Batonoff mask has not only saved me a lot of time, it's not only improved my images, but it's also avoided this situation of wasting the whole evening with out of focus shots. So those are the three mods that transformed my astrophotography images. Flocking the tube, a 3D printed Batonoff mask, and a DIY light shield and baffle from Car Carpet. Together they cost less than $20, but made a huge difference in image quality. Much better than going and buying more expensive equipment just to find that the images are pretty much the same. If you're serious about improving your astrophotos without breaking the bank, give these three mods a try. Now I'd love to hear from you. What DIY mods have you made to your equipment and what results did you get? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, as I'm sure we'd all love to hear them. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more astrophotography tips and it really helps my channel. Thank you. Thanks for watching and look forward to seeing you in the next one.